Hello, friends. I'm Pastor Pitts Evans. Welcome to the Whole Word Podcast. Let's get right to the Word of God. Proverbs chapter 3. My son, do not forget my teaching, but keep my commands in your heart, for they will prolong your life many years and bring you peace and prosperity. Let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Then you will win favor and a good name in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. And all your ways submit to him and he will make your path straight. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and shun evil. This will bring health to your body and nourishment to your bones. Honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruits of all of your crops. Then your barns will be filled to overflowing, and your vats will brim over with new wine. My son, do not despise the Lord's discipline, and do not resent His rebuke, because the Lord disciplines those He loves, as a father the son he delights in. Blessed are those who find wisdom, those who gain understanding, for she is more profitable than silver and yields better returns than gold. She is more precious than rubies. Nothing you desire can compare with her. Long life is in her right hand. In her left hand are riches and honor. Her ways are pleasant ways and all of her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to those who take hold of her. Those who hold her fast will be blessed. By wisdom, the Lord laid the earth's foundations. By understanding, he set the heavens in place. By his knowledge, the watery depths were divided, and the clouds let drop the dew. My son, Do not let wisdom and understanding out of your sight. Preserve sound judgment and discretion. They will be life for you, an ornament to grace your neck. Then you will go on your way in safety, and your foot will not stumble. When you lie down, you will not be afraid. When you lie down, your sleep will be sweet. Have no fear of sudden disaster or of the ruin that overtakes the wicked. For the Lord will be at your side and will keep your foot from being snared. Do not withhold good from those to whom it is due when it is in your power to act. Do not say to your neighbor, come back tomorrow and I'll give it to you when you already have it with you. Do not plot harm against your neighbor who lives trustfully near you. Do not accuse anyone for no reason, when they have done you no harm. Do not envy the violent, or choose any of their ways. For the Lord detests the perverse, but He takes the upright into His confidence. The Lord's curse is on the house of the wicked, but He blesses the home of the righteous. He mocks proud mockers, but shows favor to the humble and oppressed. The wise inherit honor, but fools only get shame. Now, this basically is a compilation of um, short instruction from a father to his son, uh, giving the benefits of virtue and virtuous behavior. So it opens with these words, my son, do not forget my teaching. So we assume the author is Solomon and he's speaking to one of his sons or Uh, perhaps successively to all of his sons. But he says, Don't forget my teachings, keep my commands in your heart, for they will prolong your life many years and bring you peace and prosperity. So the benefits of these virtues that are going to be uh, explained are long life and peace and prosperity. First, um, he addresses love and faithfulness. He says, Let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Then you will win favor and a good name in the sight of God and man. That's an interesting phrase at the end, in the sight of God and man. And so there are a number of passages. I remember one specifically about Samuel, 
growing in grace and favor with God and man. And then in the New Testament, Jesus himself grew in uh, favor with God and man. Their precious promises from the Lord, um, verse 5, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your path straight. He will direct your path. So this, uh, this promise is often quoted from these two verses. Trust on the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your path straight. In other words, live for the Lord. Don't live according to what your eyes see. Don't uh, live according to what your, your social media friends tell you. But trust in the Lord and the Lord's word and the Lord's ways, and he will direct your life. Otherwise, um, you're directing your own life, or God forbid, you're under the direction of another spirit as opposed to the Holy Spirit. Verse 7, do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and shun evil. This will bring health to your body and nourishment to your bones. And so the fear of the Lord um, and the avoidance of evil is uh, life-giving and and health-giving. You should honor the Lord with your finances. It says specifically, honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruits of all your crops. Then your barns will be filled to overflowing and your vats will brim over with new wine. In other words, if you honor the Lord with your finances first, he'll take care of your financial well-being in your whole house. Verse 11, Solomon speaking to his son, My son, do not despise the Lord's discipline and do not resent his rebuke, because the Lord disciplines those he loves as a father, the son he delights in. And so Solomon, speaking as a natural father and a good father, is explaining to his son that God himself, must discipline us because he's our heavenly father and he wants to correct um, aberrant behavior or things that are out of order. Next, Solomon compares wisdom to the tree of life. The tree of life, of course, was the one of the two trees in the Garden of Eden. This was the one by which you could live forever. So listen to the words, blessed are those who find wisdom, those who gain understanding, for she is more profitable than silver and yields better returns than gold. She's more precious than rubies. Nothing you desire can compare with her. Long life is in her right hand, in her left hand are riches and honor. Her ways are pleasant ways, and all of her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to those who take hold of her. Those who hold her fast will be blessed. And so the the wisdom, this time being compared to a tree of life, which was able to give eternal life as long as you consumed of the fruit. So the the fruit of wisdom is life and eventually eternal life in as much as true wisdom points to the Lord. With wisdom comes sound judgment. Verse 21, my son, do not let wisdom and understanding out of your sight. Preserve sound judgment and discretion. They will be life for you. Then you will go on your way in safety and your foot will not stumble. And so this um, pursuit of wisdom continues. Solomon says that you should um, do whatever good you can. John Wesley had a saying, uh, John Wesley, the Methodist theologian, do all the good you can to whoever you can for as long as you can. And that lines up with this proverb, verse 27, do not withhold good from those to whom it is due when it is in your power to act. Do not say to your neighbor, come back tomorrow and I'll give it to you when you already have it with you. In other words, don't delay just to demonstrate your power over the poor, but go ahead and act within whatever your abilities are to help those who are in need. This closes out with um, four or five verses of general guidelines toward virtuous behavior. Verse 29, do not plot harm against your neighbor who lives trustfully near you. So be a good neighbor. Do not accuse anyone for no reason when they have done you no harm. And so avoid um, accusations and false accusations specifically. Do not envy the violent or choose any of their ways. For the Lord detests the perverse, but takes the upright into his confidence. And so we should emulate virtuous people and not um, violent people. 
The Lord's curse is on the house of the wicked, but he blesses the home of the righteous. He mocks proud mockers, but shows favor to the humble and oppressed. So therefore, we want the favor of the Lord. We don't want to be found as proud mockers. And then finally, the last verse, the wise inherit honor, but fools only get shame. So many, um, many powerful guidelines for virtuous living. Again, Solomon, as a father, was speaking to his son. But you can receive all of this as if your heavenly father, uh, speaking through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, is saying these words to you. All of these principles are applicable under the old covenant and the new. And so, Father, we thank you for these guidelines for virtuous behavior. Lord, um, may we do all the good we can to whomever we can for as long as we can. May we be found in pursuit of wisdom. May we treasure it as a tree of life leading us into eternity as we pursue you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for listening to this episode of The Whole Word. It was brought to you by Whole Word Fellowship and the Northern Virginia House of Prayer. If you were encouraged, please share our podcast with your friends. We'd also appreciate it if you'd hit subscribe in your favorite podcast app and take a few moments to write a review. If you'd like more information on our church and our ministry, you can go to wholeword.net or wholewordpodcast.com for more information. Thank you again, and may the Lord Jesus bless you today and always.